Windows XP, Windows Update no longer works, so here's how to make a better XP installer with every update and fix ever released plus 5 years of unreleased updates and unofficial service pack 4, and it's all built into the standard setup for Windows XP. Let's get started with a list of what you will need to complete this XP update project. First of all, a working PC or virtual machine with Windows XP. Yes, it must be Windows XP. And I've got all the files in one place here. An XP ISO or CD. There will be more info on this much later in the video. The 7-zip program to unpack files. Windows XP Unofficial Service Pack 4 Installer. Windows XP Unofficial Service Pack for Post SP4 Update Pack, and finally the Ryan VM Integrator to build the final image. Download links for everything and written method in the video description. We'll start off with making some folders. I'm going to take all of those downloads and take them and cut them. And we're going to move them into a folder in the root of drive C. So let's go ahead and make that folder. We'll open up drive C. And if your XP install is fresh, you will get that warning new folder called XP-SP4. And then we'll just simply move that downloads folder into there. And that's where the downloads will be. Again, everything for this project will be in this folder. And so now I've got that in there. Everything's in the Downloads folder in the CXP-SP4 folder. We'll go ahead and make a new folder and we'll call that the Build folder. This is where the built installation files will go. And finally we'll install 7-zip for this part and that just takes a couple seconds to install. Be sure to use the folder names exactly as written in the video description because all of the future steps in this video depend on having the correct folder name. Recommend using a disk or ISO file of Windows XP Home or Pro Service Pack 3 Retail or OEM. Highly recommended to use an original disk with no mods or customizations. More info on CDs and ISOs in video description. If you're copying files from a CD, go ahead and open the build folder, go into My Computer, right click the CD and click Open, select everything with Ctrl A or click and drag like I did there, right click and copy. Now paste into that folder. Okay, since it's a CD, it's going to take a couple minutes to copy. Really depends on how fast your CD drive is and the condition of the disk. It's a lot faster and easier to use an ISO here, and to do that you simply take the ISO, copy it, and paste it into the build folder. And that just takes a couple seconds. Now right click the ISO and go to 7-zip and extract here. Give 7-Zip a minute to do its thing, and you'll want to delete the ISO out of that folder. And there we go. We've got a nice clean folder ready to build. And that's the extracted Windows XP installation files. You can also delete this boot folder from the CD contents. I don't think leaving it will hurt anything, but just to be safe, I deleted it when I built mine. And also remember, again, don't forget to delete the ISO. Now it's time to integrate or slipstream that unofficial service pack 4. To do that, we will need to open a command prompt. So go to start and open a command prompt. cd space slash xp dash sp4 slash downloads. And I will zoom in on the command window, put the command on screen, as well as have it in the video description. It's simply the installer name, space slash integrate, colon, and then the path to the build folder. So we'll go in and we'll copy the path of that build folder and we'll take that and paste it into the command prompt window and press enter. Of course, you could also type it in since it's a fairly short path and it's extracting. That extraction step will take a minute or two, again, depending on how fast your PC is. The process is fully automated. There you can see it's now copying the files, which are the Service Pack 4 files, and it's building those into the installation image. And again, it will take a couple minutes now. It's done. 
some important information about the next part of the video. If you're using XP on these CPUs or older, a Pentium 3 or F on XP, do not integrate the next update. If it's a Pentium 4 or an F on 64, go ahead and install the next update. Why? Because these older CPUs don't have SSC2, and so that's required for these updates. Consider the possibility of building two ISOs one with this update and one without if you're going to be working with older PCs. Now that I've covered the scenarios where you should not use this update, let's go ahead and extract and integrate it to the installation image. So we'll go ahead and browse to the XPSP4 folder, open that up, go into the downloads folder, extract that post XP update pack 7 zip file, and it will have its own folder there. Go ahead and open up that folder and look inside the file there with the long name. I'll have it in the video description. Extract that to its own folder. Open that up and there it is. So now we're going to want to copy that path and go to the start menu here and open a command prompt and we'll enter cd space. That's change directory. We'll paste the path and press enter. Okay, now we're in there. Simply run slipstream.bat. Now we've got to type in or copy paste your choice, really, the path to that build folder. And we'll copy that. Okay, we'll get back to the command prompt window and we'll right click and paste and press enter. And again, you can type it in if you want to. That's why I made the build folder path short. And once you press enter, you'll see a bunch of file names fly by and it's done. You can close that out. Another very important step here to save time and optimize the installation process. Go into that PostSP4 folder and look for the file that says NetFX off. It's very important to extract this and put it into the ISO that we're building. So what this is, is it disables .NET Framework 3.5. So simply copy that file Open the i386 folder, right click and paste, click yes to overwrite. So what this does is disables the default installation of the .NET Framework 3.5. You can always install it manually if needed, but this saves a lot of time during the installation process. Time to extract the final tool for this video. Right click that RPM integrator and extract. Now I don't think this is the best or most featured ISO builder, but it is simple and has no additional requirements. So all we have to do to use this tool is go to the Make ISO tab, which I've already done there. Go ahead and get the path to the Build folder and copy it. You can also browse using the button, but I find that easier to just copy the path and paste that in. Now give it a folder for the ISO. I'll just put it right in the XPSP4 folder and I'll call it xpsp4.iso, volume label, call it xpsp4 or whatever you like, and leave everything else at the default. Go ahead and hit the button, and it's going. It should only take a couple minutes to build. And it's done. There you can see the ISO and the build folder. Now I did want to note that this is over 700 megabytes, so it does require a DVD if you're using a PC with an optical drive. Unfortunately, it does not fit on a CD. That's one of the few drawbacks of this method. So if you're using a PC that does not boot from USB, I kind of have a workaround for that, and I'll be doing a separate video on that later. But again, if you're using optical media, going to have to be some type of DVD and, or again build it onto a flash drive. And there we can see all the files built in. And in the next section I'll show you the setup process so you can see that it works just the same as any other XP CD or setup program. Booting up you'll get that old school installer for XP and it'll copy all the files over after you partition and format the hard drive. And you reboot. Go into the normal XP setup, and it goes through its whole installing devices, which usually takes a couple minutes. And you go through this, just like any other XP setup, I'd notice no changes to the setup. 
enter your product key, your computer name, wait for networking. Yeah, okay. And so we will be doing more videos on XP in the future, probably with some customizations of the installation and everything. So feel free to leave your ideas in the comments and please subscribe to help support the channel if this video helped you out. So the installation's almost done here. It's going to reboot one more time, do its video settings thing. And there we go, there's that. And I'm just showing you again that this works just the same as a, any other XP installation. So let's go ahead and kick back and listen to that classic setup music. and the install is finished. Video driver is installed, and let's go ahead and look at properties so you can see it calls itself version 2014 service pack 3. When we look at the disk space, it go into computer, right click drive C properties, you're using a little over 3 gigs depending on how big your drivers are. We'll go ahead and close that, and let's take a look at one more thing. We'll go into the Windows folder, System32 folder, show the contents in all of them. Let's look at kernel32.dll. Right-click Properties, Version, File Version, and that is the most up-to-date version that exists for Windows XP, so the integration process worked. Uh, also, if you want to install .NET Framework, be prepared to wait about 30 to 45 minutes. So in conclusion, I think it's great. A Windows XP installation that comes right out of the disk or USB drive with everything fully updated, no fussing around with wasting time on installing updates. It's a great base for other XP projects to build off of. So in the future, we'll be looking at some other things you can do with XP, such as integrating some modifications, automating the setup, building in drivers for AHCI, RAID, SCSI, that sort of thing, as well as a bootable USB. Please leave a comment if it worked or if you had any problems or if you found anything in this video you would change or improve. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell for notifications.